G'day, Sean here, and we have new software updates out for the Hi5 and the Rio One and the ZMU4. SUP 2.1 for the Hi5 and the Rio One, and SUP 1.1 for the ZMU4. Well, they're all now available to download from arricom SUPS. And remember, please read the release notes. Now, the biggest change from our point of view is that we have rather drastically uh, increased the stability of the process for sending files from the Hi5, like user setups, lens files, or even controlling playback, changing camera settings, and triggering cameras. That behavior has now drastically improved. It's not really something I can demonstrate here, but we have had fantastic feedback from our beta testers, so please, Go and find uh, out for yourself, go and install the new firmware and let us know what you think of the new radio stability that we have introduced. Talking about radio connectivity, well, users in the USA and Canada will be very happy to know that the RF900 is now shipping. Thanks for your patience with us on this one. We wanted to make sure that the stability was rock solid and we're really happy with the latest round of beta testing feedback for this as well. So. With 2.1, we include a bunch of firmware updates for this device and they're now shipping. If you have an order, it should be shipped in the next couple of weeks and we expect our dealers to start carrying stock. One just little point on the RF900 module. So it's our really long radio, range radio module and it supports network mode. So you could have say, three de devices acting as clients and one as a host on a camera in a rear one. But best practice would then be to have your B camera using RF2400 or RF emit because then you're having your two cameras on completely separate frequency bands and that is what we think is best practice. Of course, you can have multiple 900 modules on different channels and all of that, it will still work. But just a note, if you're operating on say like a really busy backlot with lots of different crews and they're all now using the 900 megahertz band, maybe that's not the best way to go about it. But Regardless, go check out the 900 modules. We think you're going to love them. And yeah, lucky you for being in a region where that band is available for public use. A couple of other things that are now supported in 2.1. The first one is the Cinefade. So you can go to alshop.ari.de and download the Cinefade license key, which allows you to control the Cinefade in very ND mode, in rotopolar mode, and the Cinefade effect mode, which is the special mode that allows you to change your depth of field in the middle of a shot without changing exposure. It's Pretty cool. So that would operate as a fourth axis so that you have the rotopolar sitting in your map box and you can still have three lens motors connected. And I go into a lot more detail about all of that in a specialized tech talk, which is also now available. The link is over here somewhere. The next feature is the ability for the Hi5 to control a virtual T-stop with the iris slider and a virtual focal length with the force pad. So let me explain the setup. This is basically designed for people who are using non-LDS lenses and might only have a focus motor connected to the system. So in this case, I've turned off the lens mount in the Alexa 35, so it's not accepting lens data from the lens. And then I have a C-Force Mini here, which has the 50 teeth upgrade, by the way, highly recommended. That's Elbus uh, connected with Elbus to the Alexa 35. And then I'm using the internal radio to talk to this Hi5 and I've sent a lens file to the camera. So typically this would be if you had like a vintage zoom on here and you're using lens files with only one motor. Now what I can do is I can go into the control setup of the Hi5 and I can select the uh, to assign the slider to virtual T-stop instead of an iris motor, which would be normal. And you would set the force pad to be virtual focal length. When you do that, if you go back to the main display page here, you'll see that I can move the iris slider and the depth of field will change to correspond with the calculation that the Hi5 is now doing. And the same thing with the focal length. So that is really useful because previously, if there was no iris position and no focal length position, then the unit couldn't calculate what the depth of field is. But I still have that all working with only one motor. Now, the other th little thing to note is that if you send a lens file to this system, which only has focus data, then it will assume that the iris on that lens goes from T1 to T32, and the focal length is zero to 1000. So it will still work, 
But if you have made a lens file which also includes the iris scale and the zoom scale or focal length scale, then it will limit the range to that. So here I just used my one motor to also add a, a zoom scale and an iris scale to the lens file that I have sent. And then I get the zoom range between 24 to 75 and the correct iris range for this lens, even though I don't have motors on it. Pretty cool. SUP 2.1 also brings a nice little change to the way that we support auxiliary motors in the Hi5. Now, an aux motor is where you set it as a fourth channel. Now, you can only currently do this with the C-Force Mini RF, but we are looking at bringing that functionality to the other motors as well. But on a Mini RF, you can have focus, iris, zoom, or aux being set. And so in this particular instance, I have focus, iris, and auxiliary on my Hi5, and I've changed zoom over here to be on the ZMU4. Now, auxiliary is being controlled by the force pad. Now, why would you want to do that? Well, maybe you have a rotor polar that you would like to motorize because you haven't yet got yourself a cine fade, or you want to be one of those really cool first ACs who have panning horns. That is a genuine use case for an auxiliary motor. I instead have chosen to feature this little super handsome little mascot here. So I basically have focus, iris, and then an aux control here on the zoom axis, which is totally something you can do. Now the update is to show you that we have a little scale now that goes next to the iris position display that will give you a little scale between zero and 100% basically. There's no lens data assigned to this auxiliary axis yet, but it's nice to at least know what position you're in so that you can have a repeatable position for where this little guy's looking at, if you need to. When you make a lens file, one of the pieces of information that the system asks of you is for a lens serial number. And that's because even if you have, say, two 50mm lenses from the same manufacturer, same type of lens, normally identical, you might notice that the focus scales differ because generally when cine lenses are made, they are assembled and then measured for the focus scale and then the focus scale is marked on the lens barrel. So you can have some discrepancies in the distance between different marks, even if you have two identical lenses, just because of the tolerances when they're being manufactured. Therefore, we still highly recommend that you put the correct serial number into the high five when you're making lens maps, but in some situations, that's just a bit of a pain, so we now let you skip it. For example, if you just need to do a quick and dirty um, like costume test or something. So you can skip it. The Hi5 will then generate a random serial number as we still need a serial number to be applied to the lens file, but you can now skip it. We've now made it possible to skip the favorites menu when you're selecting a lens file. So when you go into the lens file browser in the lens file menu, in the browser, if you deselect one of the folders, which you can now do, so you would press the favorite button so that there is no star visible, then the next time that you go into the lens file menu, you will be taken straight to the browser. Some people prefer to operate like this, particularly on massive multi-camera jobs where you're constantly changing between cameras, so you no longer have to go to the favorites page if you don't want to. We've also now made the browser view available for two new menu categories. The first one is for user setups. So if you go into the menu and down to user setups, you'll see that there is now a browser view available. And in here, you can create different folders, say for the user setups for different cameras, and then select one as a favorite so that the next time you go into the load setup menu, it will take you straight to your favorite folder. The second category is that we now enabled the browser view for rings. Now that's pretty useful because we don't often see people changing frequently between say standard rings and left-handed rings. And we have so many rings now because we have metric and imperial for standard, left-handed and reversed, plus the iris rings. If they were all in one long menu, well, it would be a bit of a pain to navigate through. So now you can go into the rings browser. So if you hit the new little browser button there in the ring section, you'll see that you get that folder tree like we introduced for lens maps in sub two. And then you can go through and set say the reversed imperial focus rings to be your favorite. The next time that you go into rings and then ring selection, you will only be shown the contents of that folder so that you can have just the reversed rings there if that's all you're using and you don't wanna use the smart ring detection feature. Or perhaps you're using WCU4 pre-marked rings with your i5. The 
other nice little thing is that we've introduced a new user button. So if you go to your user button homepage, for example, that's the fourth function page on the home screen, you can go and set a new user button function to be a menu shortcut. And then at the bottom, it says favorite rings. So now every time I press that user button, it takes me straight to my favorite rings folder, which in this case is those reversed imperial focus rings, which will make it a lot quicker to change your ring when you snap a new one, for example. Alrighty, that brings us to the end. If you have any questions or a feature request, please leave that down in the comment section below. And until then, I'll be spinning over here. See you next time. Bye.